Today I will give you my top 10 sculpting tips and tricks in Blender, with the help of a few characters that I created. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Top 10 sculpting tips and tricks. <clears throat> One of the hardest things to do when creating a character is getting the right proportions. Now if you create an armature like this, you can simply sculpt over the armature and get it right. To do so, go to File, User Preferences, let me just pull it down from the other screen, there you go. Go to Add-ons and make sure you have a Rigging Rigify activated. Once you do that, you can hit the Shift A button and you'll have this option, Armature. Go down to human meta rig and there you go now you get a lot of cool stuff for example you can also get the right proportions for the face the eyes the mouth the ears and everything else and if you want to create a stylized character you can simply hit the tab button for the edit mode you can go to options x-axis mirror activate this and once you do that you can simply move the armature so for example I can grab the bones over here and create a character with huge arms. Let me see, let me just grab this over here. There you go. And there you go. You have a character with huge arms. So you can simply just hit the shift A button, mesh, UV sphere, and you can start placing your sphere around the armature. You can duplicate this, put it over here for the arms and then go to the mirror modifier and once you're done you can simply go to sculpt mode over here you can start pushing the mesh to create your character another cool thing is that if you go out of sculpt mode and hit shift a again to armature you can go to animals and have different armatures for animals like this so here we have a bird a cat a horse a shark and a wolf when sculpting a character, it's always a good idea to sculpt the limbs separate from the body. Now, this character is already done and merged, but just for demonstration, I cut off the limbs with some boxes with the boolean tool modifier. So, if you go close to here, for example, you can see that the armpits and the arm are very close to each other, which makes it very hard to sculpt this area if it was merged. Another good example would be the fingers. So if you are sculpting the fingers together, you're gonna have a very hard time sculpting parts like over here, because whenever you wanna sculpt this area, you will probably sculpt the other finger as well. If your fingers are separate, you won't have that issue, and then you can merge them together once you are done sculpting. To merge them together, it's actually quite simple. All you gotta do, for example, let's say I am sculpting these two areas separately. All you gotta do is go to the boolean modifier over here select the other object go to union you apply it you can remove the duplicate over here and then you go to sculpt mode and you just smooth things out when sculpting a character with many different elements you can easily switch between one object and another in the sculpt mode to demonstrate this i'm gonna grab the forearm and switch it to sculpt mode i'm gonna grab the upper arm and do the same thing now with the grab brush i'm going to push the upper arm down and i can simply select the forearm and continue sculpting it this way that said if it's not working for you it's because you changed the user preferences default from right click to left click so if you have it on left click it's going to be a bit different you can switch between one object and another by using the alt key on your keyboard and clicking on the other object. When sculpting a character in Blender, sometimes the camera of the viewport goes out of place and it becomes very difficult to rotate around your character. If you select any part of the character, for example, the body, and use the numpad full stop button on your keyboard, it will focus on that area. The cool thing is if you go to sculpt mode, and let's say I am sculpting this area over here. If I rotate around this area, you can see how it moves. Let's say I want to switch to the other part of the body. If I add a quick soft stroke over here, so it doesn't really have to be a big stroke, I can use the same method. So full stop numpad button, and it will focus on this area. This makes it a lot easier to sculpt different areas of the character. After adding a lot of details to your character with dynamic topology, the poly count goes really high and it becomes very difficult to manipulate the objects. So for example, if we take a look in the edit mode with the coats, we're going to notice right away that it is very dense. So if you want to sculpt it and do a big change like this, you're going to get this really weird wobbly look. Now there's a really cool workaround. So here I duplicated the coat, 
let's grab this one right here and i added a decimate modifier so you can go to add modifier decimate over here and by default it's going to show you the amount of faces you got so the first one has around 1 million faces and this is at ratio 1. I'm going to take the second one. So here I changed the ratio to 0.1. So this is basically 10% of the original face count. So here we have almost 100,000. After I applied it over here, here we have the third one. So you can see right away that they actually all look identical. So it doesn't really change the look of the object. However, if I go to sculpt mode, right now I can do bigger changes without really having that wobbly weird look and it makes things a lot easier. One disadvantage of using the decimate modifier to reduce the poly count is that if later on you want to smooth out this area, for example with the shift button, you will easily lose all of the details that you worked hard for. So what we're gonna do here is add more polygons over here without changing the form of the object. To do so, just choose any brush that you don't usually use, for example the blob, and then reduce the strength to zero Make sure that you have dynamic topology activated and then choose any detail size you want. And once you do that, I'm going to hit the Z button so that we can see what's going on. I'm just going to apply some pressure over here. And as you can see, I'm adding more details. But the fact is, I'm not changing the form of the object because the strength is at zero. So after doing that with the shift button, you can smooth out this area without losing the details. Now, If I did not do that, again, you will lose whoops, with the shift button over here, you will lose all of the details. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to add some details by applying some pressure with the blob brush. I'm going to use the shift button again. And there you go. You don't lose the details that you worked very hard for. The lattice modifier is a very powerful tool in Blender that you could use to modify the shape of your character. So let's say, for example, I want to make the jaw less wide. We can hit the shift A button, create a lattice. I'm going to scale it up. Let me just go to orthographic view over here. So I will scale it in the Z axis just to make sure that the lattice goes around the character like this. There you go. That should work pretty well. Once I do that, I will go, let me just scale it a bit more. I'll go to this icon over here and just increase the U a bit, the V as well, which is in the side over here. And finally, I can go to the W and increase it a bit more so that I have more control over the face. There you go. I think that would work pretty well for this character. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the character, go to the modifier icon, add modifier, go to lattice. So it should be over here. Once you do that, just grab the lattice right here, or you could just search for it. And then you can go to the lattice, hit the tab button, and once you do that, you can grab the vertices. So let's say, let's grab the vertices of the jaw over here and we can scale it down in the X axis. There you go. And we can play around with other things like the neck. I can make it shorter like so. I can even make this part less wide. I can go to the head, for example, on the side and just grab the whole thing over here and just scale it down a bit, pull it down. And there you go. We have a different shape that we easily modified with the lattice modifier. Now you can always play around with single vertices as well and see what that does. It will change this area. For example, if you want to play around with the eyes position, so we can go to only render, grab the object, Actually, let me go out of the edit mode. Let me grab the character. You can remove the eye to see how it looks without the lattice and you can activate the eye. If you like it, you just have to apply it and that's about it. Let's say you want to create a horn for the teddy bear. Now, sure, you can do it in sculpt mode and try to extrude or pull out this part of the head and then try to refine it to get a sharp looking horn. Or you can just create with shift A, mesh, a cone. I'm just going to pull it down here. I'm going to scale it down in edit mode, maybe even the X axis. Let me just actually Z axis. There you go. That should be fine. I'm going to rotate it, place it on the forehead. Make sure that it 
goes through the teddy bear so that you don't have issues when you join it. There you go, that should work for this demonstration. I will then grab the teddy bear, add modifier boolean. So far you should know this. We will select the horn, switch from intersect to union. I just misclicked that, so union, there you go. And then apply it. Now just remove the original one, go back to the teddy bear, go to sculpt mode. I'm gonna hit the T button to take out this menu over here. Make sure you activate dynamic topology because as you can see, the object that we just created, the pulley count is very different from the teddy bear, which means if I try to smooth it out with the shift button, it's gonna do this. Now, if you remember my earlier tip on adding details without changing the form, so just grab any brush, change the strength to zero, get close enough to add details. If I had the Z button, we can see what's going on. I could also add a bit more, maybe decrease this to five, there you go. Now, if I add details over here, like this, I can then use the shift button to smooth it out again, but this time we're gonna get a refined looking horn. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where you're trying to sculpt a part of the body, so for example the back of the arm over here, but it's blocked by another element. It can be quite problematic, especially if that element is connected to the arm as it is over here. So what we can do is use the Alt B button like this and just grab an area and it basically isolates that area so you can sculpt it and once you're done you can remove the isolation by using the alt b button again as for the last tip of the day i will leave you with an underrated feature that not a lot of sculptors use the mask you can also access it with the m button so once you hit the m button you can basically for example go over here mask out the bottom lip which is an area that can really use some masking when sculpting and you can use the control button to remove any unwanted masking like over here there you go and you can also use the shift button to smooth out the borders of the mask and the control i button to switch the mask once you do that let me just remove this little area of masking you can start sculpting the bottom lip without bothering with the upper one and this becomes quite vital for things like the lips because otherwise it would be very difficult to put the upper lip on top of the bottom lip. You can hit Control i and then continue sculpting the upper lip and push it over the bottom one. And once you're done, you can use the Alt-M button to remove the mask and there you go. So without the mask brush, this would become very, very difficult near to impossible. That's about it. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, you know how it is. Also, there is a sculpting course on my Gumroad if you didn't know, so if you want to learn how to sculpt, links in the description below. And we hit 20,000 subscribers. That is just insane. I am so, so happy right now and so excited for the channel. So first of all, thank you for helping me reach that number. Also, I am making a special video next week. If you are following me on Twitter, you probably already know what it's going to be about. Very excited about that video i'm actually working on it right now and last but not least i joined sketchfab so i'm adding models over there now i just joined so there are a lot of sculpts but you can follow me there i'll add a link in the description below and you can use the models as reference so uh yeah anything else no 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 that's about it and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.